I'm here because my wife doesn't trust me and she's very insecure and I would like a divorce. I found him and another woman having sex on the same roll of film that I was having my child. If I look at those proofs and it's on the same roll, you still gonna stand up here and deny? I'm not denying that they were on the same roll, but you saying oh, they're in the same roll. Your Honor, he has another woman staying in my house answering my phone. Your She's house. pregnant. Everything She's in that pregnant. house is in my name. She's Nothing. Pregnant. You have never owned oh, nothing. I, I took care of you for two partner. years you and, and your son. I took care of you. And you your son. The car. All right. Now, Deandra Simmons wants her husband Lawrence to pay child support for their three month old baby in today's session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Judge Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Deandra Simmons versus Lawrence Simmons. And I'm told that this marriage has been uh, for three ye one year. Yes. And it's over already. Yes, it is. And you've been separated for the last two months. Yes, Your Honor. With a three-month-old child. Yes, Your Honor. So what's going on? Well, Your Honor, I am here today because I want a divorce from this scum of the earth because I caught him and another woman having sex on the same film where I was having his baby. You saw it I on the film? I saw it on the film, Your Honor, right before I was having his baby. It's on the same film. So the film of your childbirth. Yes. And the film of his outside activities yes, is all on the same Honor. role. Yes, Your Honor. So I assume that the photographer was the same meeting They your took pictures themselves, snapped it themselves. That's what they did, Your Honor. When did you take this film? In February. That was and when we were reconciled. And you took them but didn't bother to no, have them develop. No, I, I didn't have the money to get them developed at the time. And she stole the film from my house and wouldn't get it developed. I didn't steal anything, you scum. Wait a minute. She, but she called you, you a scum. You slut whore. Stop. She called you a scum and you laughed. Is that funny? No, it's not. So would you would, how would you define yourself? I don't define myself as a scum at all. I define myself as throughout the marriage, yes, I've man made my mistakes, but throughout the marriage, <laughs> I was mistakes. there in every possible way, even throughout all her insecurities, oh, all her yeah. emotional breakdowns, You made me insecure, everything. you slut whore, okay? Okay, Ms. Simmons. I'm sorry, Your Honor. What are you talking about, you made a mistake? How does someone walk into court and say, I am so really sick of this word mistake. Yo, maybe somebody needs to give me a dictionary so I can define the word mistake. It Take changes a dictionary. daily. Bring me a dictionary. Because I want to read you the definition of mistake. <laughs> when you take your body to a certain place and you position it in a certain manner <laughs> and you do it with another person and then that person, what, what acts did you see on that roll uh, of film? You're on an oral sex uh, and having sex. Now, it's no mistake for oral sex. How in the devil is that a mistake when you got to use parts of your body and allow somebody to touch it and allow somebody to put their mouth over it? He put his mouth now on How is that a mistake? Too. He used his mouth too, Your Honor. Now you explain to me how that's a mistake, Mr. Simmons. Because there wasn't nothing going on at home. There was I nothing going there. on at home. Your wife just gave birth. To, she was pregnant with your child. Was that your child she was carrying? <laughs> For a, minute, for, for a moment, I wasn't sure because she oh. kept telling me that she was going to name the child oh after God. someone. She kept telling me Wait she slept. No. Your <laughs> wife was pregnant in February, right? Mm -hmm. Baby born in March. Mm -hmm. So that means she's at least eight months pregnant if mm -hmm. her pregnancy was to turn. Yeah. So she's walking around with a big belly, carrying your child. And as a result, she can't have sex either, right? That's right. And you telling me what nothing going on at home. I wasn't even at home. I tried to Thank reconcile. You. I tried to reconcile. Well, I'm going to read you the word mistake. No, no she did not try to reconcile. Hold on a second. I'm going to read you the definition of mistake. Because I want you to use that again. OK? I hate when people use words and they don't know the meaning. It's just something that bothers me. So I'm going to define this word once and for all. Because obviously, you haven't taken the time. According to Webster's latest dictionary, mistake to make a wrong judgment of the character or ability of, to confuse with another. Were you confused? <laughs> no. Very. <laughs> very. <laughs> very confused. No. You knew exactly what you were doing, didn't you? Sure did. And you knew the person? Yes. So now, you want to just tell me that at the moment you exercised poor judgment? You can call it that. 
How would you define it? Like I, well, I can't say it's a mistake. Well, mm -mm. <laughs> well, like I said, I mean, like it, it, it was just ignorance and out of poor knowledge. I mean, out, out of poor judgment, it was something that you know that that shouldn't have been done, but it was done, and there's nothing I could do now to take it back. I guess you wanted to look at it over and over and remind yourself of how good it was. Is that it? <laughs> Is it? Was that the reason? Just out of just out of spite, just doing it. That's out all. of spite? Out of to spite, spite who? <laughs> so you wanted your wife to find it. Is that what you're telling no, me? No, I did not. I did not want my wife to find these. First of all, as I stated, that, that film was not even supposed to be seen. It was, I had three rolls of film, and when, and when we got into an argument, she took the film when she left my house. That my was, baby was born. My baby was born. Okay, married. did you But that a... was my film. That was my possession. Regardless of what child was on it, that was in my house, no, and that was my I, possession. I, 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 I house. take no, it was my house. My no. name is on that lease, not yours. And my you name you don't own not, nothing. You were you married. Anything. You were married. That made Hispanic. you one. That made two. No, become no because one. we were two the whole time. It well, was not. It was all to the theory of marriage, it did. Obviously, it did not. Well, well she didn't. She was, was the work, with fi 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 final definition theory. I never kicked it with my homies. Yeah. I never kicked he it. With my, I was sheltered. I was sheltered in the house, house all the time with you. I never went out with my friends doing anything. Stop, Mr. Simmons. Mrs. Simmons. He has another woman. Stop. Hold on. Okay. I'm sorry. If you had several rolls of film that you had taken before before your child was born. The birth of your child is supposed to be a happy and a joyous occasion. Am I right? I was happy at that moment. And it's supposed to be something that you celebrate together. Is that right? I, I, was, I was happy. I was celebrating And you took at that, that camera to take pictures so that your wife could see the act after the birth. Is that right? Is that why you took the camera to take the pictures? Yes. OK. So you were the only one who knew that there was something else on that roll of film. Correct. You didn't have the good sense to take that roll of film out of the camera and go get a new roll of film and put it in the camera that would only have the birth of your child. The you role, couldn't think that, that far ahead. The roll was, was out. The roll was in the little tube. Like I said, when she left the house, oh, she yeah. took the film. The film was already out That's the right. camera. The camera That's was right. gone So it wasn't already. on the same roll of film? Yes, it was, Your Honor. Yes, it was, Your Honor. Now, her it statement is it proof. was on the same roll. It's on it a proof, not. Your Honor. I have the proofs to show you. They should give you the proofs. the proofs, and then I'll know whether it's on the, the same proofs. roll. It's on the same roll. So... If I looked at those proofs and it's on the same roll, you still gonna stand up here and deny? I'm not denying they were on the same roll, but you're saying oh, they're in the same. Right. <laughs> when divorce court continues. You left when you were pregnant? Uh, yes, I left. When and I did you pregnant. constantly threaten him when he never see the child? No. I that, did it that a is couple a lie, of times. Honor. That Honor. is a lie. Wait a minute. Now she said first she said no, then she said I did a couple of times. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court. Call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of DeAndrea Simmons, who says she found pictures of her husband Lawrence having sex with another woman. Mr. Simmons, what I said was if you had a roll of film inside the camera in which you took pictures of a particular sexual act involving you and somebody else, and then you took pictures of your childbirth. You couldn't have taken out that roll of film first and put in a new roll of film that would only have your childbirth I on it. I wasn't thinking about it. Yeah, you couldn't think that far ahead. Don't ever think. think. Don't ever think. Okay. Say yeah, that's what's sad uh, about it, so is that you couldn't even think let me just get a fresh roll of film. Obviously, I wasn't thinking when I married you, neither. You sure didn't, because I sure don't love you. Your Honor, he has another woman staying in my house answering my phone. Your she's house. pregnant. Everything she's in that pregnant. house is in my name. She's Nothing. Pregnant. You have never owned oh, nothing. I, I took care of you for two apartment. years you and your son. You. And you know, your I son. Car, All right, baby. Mr. Simmons. With his daddy in jail and That's your so son. Right Mr. Simmons. But you're going to end up in jail yourself, baby, you slut whore. Mrs. Simmons, calm down. Sorry. Now I know that you're upset. Yes, you but we don't have we don't we don't carry on like that I'm either. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Two wrongs don't make a right, and you yelling and screaming at each other is not gonna solve anything. Hmm. According to this set of proofs, which I will not show to anybody but me, it's the birth of your child as well as other acts from row one, film one through 24. Now that's just utterly ridiculous. You knew, 
You, you knew that that film had to be developed, number one. And number two, you should have just taken the film while your wife was in the hospital still and gotten them straight to the shop and developed them. It was ways to avoid this. You wanted her to see that. No, I did not. I didn't even know that she was a thief and she was going to take them out of my house, I'm a thief Your Honor. Now. So did you, since she had constantly accused you, and there was a well, court... Well, this is, this is what I figured, Your Did you decide, well, let's, let me just let her see it, because I'm No, th 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 I'm, uh, this, this is what I figured. What'd I you figured think? since uh, throughout the relationship and throughout the marriage, she constantly accused me, and, you know, there, there, there was never any proof. All she had was words which said nothing, and I never did anything. So the fact was, okay, well, since she accused me, I might as well just go ahead and do it. Stupid. Oh, Stupid. That's, that's some great that's logic. That's sure. That's some great logic. No, what but if it, what it is a great logic. You? If you've been accused so many times what of doing something that you haven't done, murder? why not do it and then get accused and not what feel so bad? What if she accused you of murder? Would you go out and kill somebody? She, why, why would she accuse me of murder? I don't care. That's my stupid. point. What if she had accused you of murder? Would you that's, go out that, and that, kill somebody? That, 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 that's stupid. Why, that, I mean, she's, she's accused me for the past yeah, few years. So was, I spoke and to the stop. women. And so was your statement. So you spoke to the women. Women lied. And so was your statement that since she was falsely accusing me of having an affair, I might as well go out and have one. That was stupid. Just as stupid. Because just because someone accuses you falsely, you don't have to make it, don't have to make it true. Because what's wrong with your character? Doesn't your character say, I'm being falsely accused, which means my character is being impugned. Well, and I don't like that, the fact that my character did, is Honor. being impugned. So you're going to make it so? Well, Your Honor, that's all she ever did. Make all, your all, character negative? All, uh, all, all she ever did was tear down my character, Your Honor. She verbally <laughs> abused. She, she took personal things I took about her, about my family, about my mother, my father, things that happened to me in my past, and used them against me. I never told anybody things that, that she told me personally, but she used them against me to tear me down and use emotional wounds and use personal things, telling me I'm, I'm no good. Before all this even happened, telling me I'm no good. I'm not going to be a good father. I'm not this. I'm not that. And these are things she said to me, and these are things that, 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 that even though... Even Low Be quiet, Miss Even even though you know, like I, uh, yes, I guess I did the deed, but it's like I was already told, and that's all she did the whole time. She well, talked. Okay, pe pe people can attest to that that she did say say things personal about my mother, that she would rename my child, that she would get an abortion, that she would get an adoption to my child. That's my firstborn child. That's a threat to care. me. That's you know very her. personal. And she telling me I don't care, and I and I care very much, but I can't do nothing if I can't get to where she's at, or if she's refusing to let me see him. I can't do anything about that. So you left when you were pregnant. Uh, yes, I left him. And did you four. constantly threaten him when he never see the child? No. I that, did it a couple a lie, of times. Your Honor. Your that Honor. is a lie. Wait a minute. I, now she said, first I she said it, no, and then she said I did a I couple did of times. I did it a couple of times. Out Why of you spite, do that, Miss Simmons? Out of spite, Your Honor. Why do you guys always try to use these children as spite? I was, in, I was being very immature, Your Honor. Real immature? Really. And I hope now that your child is here, it's a son, right? Yes. Don't let that immaturity carry on any longer. Yes, Your Honor. Don't use that child as a tool to get even with Mr. Simmons for his misdeed. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. He is not the toy, nor is he the pawn. All right? Yes, Your Honor. When divorce court continues. Is the woman pregnant? Yes, but it's not. But was your child? No, she was pregnant before I even met her. Oh, you <laughs> are. Closed captioning for divorce court provided by. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll free at 1 877 311 2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce court continues in the case of Lawrence Simmons, who says his wife DeAndrea Simmons uses their child as a pawn between them. I want him to see his father on a regular basis. I don't want you saying anything to this kid about you won't see your daddy when he makes you mad. I don't want any game plan with this child's mind. Nor his heart. Yes, Your Honor. Get that straight now while he's three months old and he doesn't, feel, doesn't understand what's going on. And that goes for you too. I don't want you ever calling her a name in the presence of that child or saying anything negative about her, his, his mother, no matter what you may feel about Mrs. Simmons. As far as your son knows, the two of you have the highest respect for each other. So now, what do you want? Some child support? Yes, I do, Your Honor. And you say another woman is living in, the, in your house yes. or what was your house with yes. him now? Yes, she's answering my phone and she's told me she's pregnant. Your Honor, let, uh, okay, let me explain this. First of all, 
She has nothing to do with that place. She that house. I've I've been there since October of I 2000. Found the apartment. She I've been there since so wait October a of 2000. It's an apartment, a rented place. Yes. And you've moved out. Yes. Okay. She you're hasn't gone. even lived it's there collectively. Yours. She she now, hasn't even collectively lived there is for the two woman months. Is pregnant? Yes, but it's not. But with your child? No, she was pregnant before I even met her. Oh, you <laughs> are. Your Honor, she was she was pregnant before I even met her, and nothing like I said, nothing in that house resembles so her name or anything. So why are you now? In a relationship. I'm not in a relationship, Your Honor. She's a it, roommate. They, there, there are five people living in my house, mm. including me. My, my, okay, my tell play, me she's a roommate. Is my play brother. Yes, yeah, she is a roommate. Oh. And we're all just living in the same house because we're all trying to help each other out. They know I, I'm struggling and they're struggling, so we're all trying to help each other out. Mr. Simmons, I, I'm going to accept, because I'm just so naive, you know? I'm just going to accept <laughs> that this woman is in your house and she's a roommate and she's paying you rent. Everyone's she paying rent. Okay. Everyone's paying rent and but everyone's you know paying what? bills. Now, I'll just give you some warning. Just be careful because based upon what I've seen coming through this court on a regular basis, they start out as the roommate, the tenant, <laughs> the girlfriend, mm -hmm. the person I'm helping out. And the next thing you know, according to the way it's always described, something just happens. Uh -huh. And folks get together. So maybe it just hasn't happened yet. Is that what you're telling me? It hasn't happened at all. Oh, OK. Well, if it happens, that's on him. But the two of you are divorcing, obviously, yes. so he can go on with his life. That's right. All you need is child support for your son. Yes, you exactly. working? Now, yeah. But, when, but, but how she's accusing me of not paying child support, for one, she knows that a month after the child was born, I did not have a job. I was scraping okay, money from friends and everything. OK, we're not going back a month everything. after he was born. We started forward. We started? We, we, yeah, forward, this way. We forget those things which are behind. Right. We, we forget that. We're going this way. Okay. When divorce court continues. The mistake was not in thinking about it before he did it, and the mistake was leaving that roll of film in that camera. Divorce court continues in the case of DeAndrea Simmons, who wants her husband, Lawrence Simmons, to pay child support for their three-month-old baby. So you working now? Now, yeah. Good. You working, Mrs. Simmons? No, I am not, Your Honor. She never has. <laughs> I gave you the jobs you had, please. Why are you not working, because of the baby? Yes, Your Honor. Excuses. You know what? It's an, if it's an excuse, it's an excuse. She has a three-month-old child. And by the time you pay the cost of child care, unless she's earning 20 plus dollars an hour, she's not going to have anything left for a three month old. Child care for a three month old averages $600 a month. Because you have to pay real close attention to them. You have to change their diaper often. You have to feed them on a regular basis. I know that. You have to shake them, you know, rock them and cradle I know them. I know that. Okay. So she's providing the love and the nurturing that your son needs. And you should be helping her do that. The court's order is $800 per month child support, payable by you to Mrs. Simmons as of, what's today? The 15th of this month, one half on the 1st and the 15th of each month and continuing until the child reaches age 18 or further order of court. And I can give you a hint, further order of court. You will be eligible for a reduction in this support when Mrs. Simmons goes to work because then we can consider both incomes. She's not going to work now. Well, $800 a month, she's not going to work now. You know that, and I know that. And another court can order her to find employment if the court believes it's in the best interest of the child. We have to weigh all of that. All right? If 500 like I said, she's going to take $600 for... If, if she goes to work, you need to understand, Mrs. Simmons. Uh, hold on. If she goes to work and she has to provide child care, all you're going to get then is an order for child support and one half of child care. So if you're thinking that it's going to help you by her going to work, it's going to reduce it. Not, it may a little bit, but then you got to tack on half of the cost of child care. So you in. 18 years. Yep. That's the order of the court. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. Don't make any more mistakes and you won't have that. I'm 
made the a magic mistake. word. It was a mistake. Yeah. Just a mistake. Yeah, it sure was a mistake. Too bad you didn't One think about it before you did it. The mistake was not in doing it. The mistake was not in thinking <laughs> about it before you did it. And the mistake was leaving that roll of film in yeah. that camera. My friend took my husband. She's a liar, cheater. This isn't the first time that this has happened. This is the second time. I didn't steal my friend's husband. Um, we were friends. It escalated into more of that. Jacqueline Russell and Lisa Miller were best friends until they swapped husbands. She was sleeping with my husband. That's not the way it happened. So don't. He was cheating on me with her. So how did you end up with her husband? He would call every day, make sure I needed anything. I'm talking, please. Whoa. Today, Jacqueline Russell wants Mitchell Russell to pay for charges he made on her credit card while living with Lisa on today's session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Judge Mabley and Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Jacqueline Russell versus Mitchell Russell. And Mr. and Mrs. Russell, I'm advised that you've been married approximately five and a half years. You have two children. You want a divorce. And Mrs. Mitchell, you're asking for reimbursement for $708.31 for a credit card debt. You got it down to the penny, huh? Yes. What happened? Well, Your Honor, for the five years we were married, he would constantly belittle me, call me names. He would never be supportive. Oh, he'd, come on. He'd change jobs constantly, and I just don't want to take that no more. So what part is it? The name calling, the changing of the jobs, the belittling? Which one is causing the divorce? Or all of it? All of it. So what kind of names would he call you? I was fat. I was ugly. I was never good enough fat. for him. Yes. <sighs> He, Based upon the way you look today? Yes. Two weeks after I had the birth of our son, I was fat. I, two weeks. I had a 10-pound baby. What does he expect? He would never have any endearing names for me. I was never... Oh, Jackie, and call. you yeah. had Good endearing names for, for him. Well, who in the devil are you? I'm... <laughs> who are you? Okay. I asked you a question, man. My name is Lisa Miller. And what made you think that you could just burst out in my courtroom I'm sorry, Your and Honor. nobody was talking to you. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Yeah. Are you supposed to be a witness? Yes, I am. Tell, I'll tell you what, you won't be if you say that again. So whatever you think you may add to this case on behalf of Mr. Russell, it won't happen because you'll be out that door quicker than quick. This is not, this is not, obviously there's some tension between the two of you, but you won't do it like that in this courtroom, all right? So, let me, so how many times have you been separated? Have you been separated other than this incident? Um, one time before, five, five months into our marriage, we were separated. Because of you cheating on me. I didn't cheat on him. I left What him. you call it? I left him. I met someone about two weeks later. Two weeks before? <laughs> no, oh, no, 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 I don't no. call that cheating. I just <laughs> met somebody. So now you got another woman. Yes. Is that who she is? Yes. yes. And you got another man? Yes. And you still haven't ended this divorce yet, this marriage yet. And you think that everything's going to be better, right? As long as... I, I don't want nothing to do with her anymore. I just... He doesn't even, want, he doesn't even see his Let kids. Let me talk to... You don't. Which witness what? am I going to talk to? This one, before I have to throw her out of here. Come up. State your name. Lisa Miller. Okay, Ms. Miller, now you, it's your turn to tell me everything you wanted to say from that seat. <laughs> First of all, that gentleman sitting in that chair, she took away from me. <laughs> that was my ex-husband. Well, is my ex-husband. Ex? Yes. So your divorce is final? My divorce is final, yes. She is nothing but a psychopath. This girl is absolutely nuts. Why do you say, how did she take your husband from you? Who knows? I, I mean, but it's a good thing that she did because... But, I mean, how did they start going together? I, it all well, started... Honor, she's with my husband. I, I mean, worked with it, her. It, it, <laughs> I worked with her. She was my best friend. She trained me. And then we all got to She was to your be best friend. friend and your supervisor? No, she was no. just a, I was a pharmacy trainer. tech, and she thought she was all it. You said she not. trained you? She did. She did. She trained okay. me at my job. All right. And then we all... We became friends, and then... A, as it went on, her and my husband got to be better friends. So the court you hung out together. 
She was always on the computer 24-7. She didn't give a crap about anything. And your Her husband kids, had a computer? Nothing. We did, yes, in our home. Yes, So the did. two of them communicated together via computer? Yes. yes. And then as things went on, we would go out, the four of us. We would all go out. Did you know that they were talking by computer? No. 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 Oh, yes, I did, Your Honor. She sat the one night and I had, had a had, conversation with the two of us. Okay, I hold on. Had, I had my suspicions. I there in turn called Mitchell. We discussed. Finally, he got it out of her last May. Who, Mr. Russell? Mis yes. Mi yes, Mitchell got it out of Jackie last May. Got what out of it? And she was sleeping with my husband. Oh. Why would I ever admit? I, I never. So Jackie, never. Jackie, you, you, admitted you admitted to it, it because then I called you David. Your with your and David all right, called David. All that. This is not a free fall. I, when, I, when Mitchell came to tell me that she said that she was sleeping with my ex-husband, I in turn Who was called, then your husband? Then my husband, yes, at that time. Then I then in turn called my ex-husband on our cell phone at his place of employment, and he said, yes, they were sleeping together. So then you... For about a month. So the two detectives, you and Mr. M Mr. Russell, ask each other's spouses, your spouses, and they oh, both admitted. I asked. He denied. But he finally admitted. Yes. Finally, yes, he did. So then you said, so if the two of you are sleeping together... Then no. I might as well join this party and go sleep no, with Mitch. No, 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 no. That, no, that's no, not that the way not it happened. No, it's not the way it happened. So how did at you all. end up with her husband? After all this happened, I was devastated. I was crushed. I was hurt. I had nothing. My ex-husband walked out on me and two children. Did not give me one red cent. Three gave hours me after nothing. she threw me out. Three hours after she threw Mitchell no, out, Honor. he was in the house. Bull crap, Jackie. Because I know times and dates. So within th Ms. Mr. Russell left Mrs. Russell's house. She and she threw out. him out. She threw me out. And within three hours, my ex husband was over there. Left me and my two young children to move in Check with in with her. Her. That's not the way it happened, Jerome. So, no, Jackie. Calm, so wait a minute. Come Stop. on, Jackie. You we know are this. Hold on. Quit lying, Mrs. Jackie. Mrs. Miller, calm down. It is, Your Honor. It has been one lie after another with this psycho. Okay, that's for the last what year. What did you say? Psycho what? Which? No, <laughs> she's a liar. Okay, she but has that lied still doesn't tell me. Everything. All right, so you're upset that your husband. I mean, I could care if she's with my ex. Stop, husband. Mrs. Miller. Let me phrase a question, if I may. Mrs. Mrs. Russell and your husband are going together, and you discover this. Yes. You have your suspicions. They're finally confirmed. Yes. So. Mr. Miller goes to Mrs. Russell's house. Yes. You still don't tell me how you ended up with Mr. Russell. Through, he, he was, he cared about me. He would call every day, make oh, sure I needed anything. I'm talking, time. please. Whoa. I had nothing. David Miller left me with nothing. Never gave me any money. Never gave me nothing. Did you ever go to court? Once I moved back. Yeah, we did. We, we got it all straightened out. Okay. So in the meanwhile, Mr. Russell is helping you with your two kids. He would call, did but I need anything? Any for my Stop, two children. Mrs. Russell. When divorce court continues. They basically pushed us together. So you decided, let's all make right. this accusation. We accusations. forced you guys to have sex with each other. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce court continues in the case of Lisa Miller as she testifies about how her husband David left her for her best friend. I had nothing. I was devastated. A, a, a man that I was with you for got 12 years uh -huh. walked out on me and my two young children. Okay, so now, did you know that Mr. Russell had two kids? Yes, I did. And according to Mrs. Russell, Mr. Russell didn't work and take care of her two kids. He was giving her money every week before they went to court. Every week he, he was gave giving her so total. I'm not talking about before they went to court. I'm talking about during the marriage, before uh, the separation. According to Mrs. Russell, Mr. Russell wasn't the type of man that worked and took care of his two kids. But now you're telling me that he's long, calling you and asking you what's needed. As long as I known Mr. Russell, he is always. Before they were separated, now, whatever. He's always taking care of his and children. And how long did you know him before they separated? Three months. Oh, Lord. <laughs> There's no... You're Three right. months. We, okay. met in May. we met in March. I thought you all we, were best friends. We, me and her. How long did met, you know her? Mrs. Russell. From March of last year. March of last year 
She's not my best friend. To, you I don't know. see how you. So this well, relationship. Well, not now. I have, I have a best friend. I just need another one. So this relationship really. Yeah, you got a best friend. Other men that you jump to and from. Well, now, Mrs. Miller, the pot can't talk about the kettle. Well, no, I understand that, but for eleven you years of my marriage, man I was too. faithful to that man. Uh huh. I so never... you started with Mr. Russell after your divorce was final. No, it was before my divorce was final, but it wasn't like three everybody thinks it was. No, it was no, not. It was like on. three weeks after. Ooh, that's a long time. But like no, I you said, all he this was three. concerned. Three months, three weeks, three days. He three was concerned. Magic number. He was worried about me. I had nothing. So why couldn't you just accept his friendship? As a man who cared about you, there was no one else around. You didn't have family. Like you all in had, the beginning, all yes, that's the way it did happen. But then it just no, kind of got more. Just, you had control over there. Oh, I know I did. Oh. But, Your Honor, during our friendship, the six months or whatever it was, he couldn't stand this woman. He would and talk. And it was only a show because talk. you were jealous every yeah, time was if I show. talked to your friends. It was friends. a show because he was cheating on me with her. Oh, so he claimed oh, that he didn't like we were not before no. her and my ex-husband were together. There was nothing going on between Mr. Mitchell. phone no. bills with her calling him Phone bills. Work. His work because you were on the phone with his mother from yes, my house you saying that you were no. supposedly a diabetic and your sugar okay. level was high all and right. you needed help. I think all of you need it. Because friendship is friendship. But friendship does not have to end up being sex shit. You have these poor kids, your two and your two, confused as heck, I know. My they're children. like, what is going on with these adults that they're supposed to be looking up to and modeling their lives after? So I guess your two kids will start dating her two kids, and they you just all be together? That will never, ever, ever, ever oh, happen please. in my life. I you, will make sure of that. You know what? You, my you, children, one of my children, understand the situation because he is old enough. But the oh, other come one, on, Mrs. Miller. How old is this child that's old enough to understand? My son is 11 years old. And, and she explained he explained everything to him, Your Honor. Everything no. that happened. No. He hates it. He, no, yes, he does hate his he father. Hates his father. Yes, he, he does. Because because idiot he is. No, because of Oh, sit down. Sit down. Sit down, Miss Miller. Sit down. Now, although you haven't brought this before me, when I hear it, it just automatically causes me some dis a distaste in my mouth. You're going to tell me that an 11-year-old child understands what the four of you are going through. That is really idiotic. And that's what tells me you need counseling. An 11-year-old can't hardly understand what the four of you are going through because you don't understand it. You just decided that you just said that the two of you got together because it just happened. And you couldn't understand why you ended up in the bed with each other as opposed to just allowing the friendship to grow. How do you think that this 11-year-old can figure out and clearly understand that mommy ended up with Mr. Russell and daddy ended up with Mrs. Russell because it just happened? They're confused. They saw four people that were friends. They saw two couples together. They saw four adults that were friends. Now all of a sudden, this is probably going to be stepdaddy and this no. stepmother and stepdaddy and stepmother. That's crazy. They don't understand that. And you're just adding more insult to injury by the two of you getting together. You can't push and blame her and call her a bad name and say she broke up your household. Come forward, Mr. Miller. Let me hear what you have to say. Is there one sensible person in the house? Nope. Nope. Your Honor, <clears throat> the only thing that <clears throat> they've told the kids is a bunch of BS and confuse the situation <sighs> twice as bad as what it really is. <clears throat> How did you end up with Ms. Russell? <sighs> That's what I'd like to know. Ms. Miller, you need to close your mouth. Well, was what, the way it started out is we were all four friends. We'd go out, and, and every time we'd go out or do something like that, they, those two would always be accusing us of doing something and doing this and doing that, so they basically pushed us together. So you decided, let's all make right. this we've, accusation. We forced you guys to have sex oh, with each other. No. You said, so wait a minute, Mr. Miller, you computer. said because they constantly accuse you, you decided to make it true? No, but yes. oh, shut up. Oh. Over the course of us going out and becoming better friends with being together, things basically just happen. Things you know, just you, happen. that is just utterly ridiculous. Things didn't basically just happen. Friends do not start dating the other person's wife or husband. Not friends. Not true friends. They respect each other. Well, I never cared for this gentleman anyhow because I heard of some of the things <laughs> oh, that... Oh, yeah, you're a real peach in my mind. Because he's better than you. 
Mrs. Yeah, Miller, right. leave. Mr. Said stop, Mr. 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 Miller, be quiet. Mr. Miller, leave my courtroom now. Get out of here. When divorce court continues. I wouldn't let you within two feet of anybody I knew. And that's the example you're setting for your children. A poor example. Closed captioning for divorce court provided by... If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Jacqueline Russell versus Mitchell Russell as the judge tries to unravel the case of two former friends swapping mates. What it is is you people can't be trusted. I wouldn't let you within two feet of anybody I knew. That's ridiculous. And that's the example you're setting for your children. A poor example. Now you really think that Mrs. Russell is going to be faithful to you when she was unfaithful to Mr. Russell? Do you really think that? People can change. People can change? I can make change for Has her heart, heart changed? I can't make somebody change Has like her that. attitude changed? Yes. So what are you providing for her? How much money are you giving up? To who? Ms. Russell. I work a full-time job, Your Honor. I work overtime. I didn't ask you I, anything. I don't need Is your name Mr. Him. Miller? We both work, Your Honor. We, we split everything down the middle as far as the bills and everything like that. So now you're going to take on Mr. Russell's two kids? They live with us, yes. You're going to split kids. So you'll take care of his two, and he'll take care of your two. No, Is that what I, you're going to do? I get, I, I get my kids every weekend. Your Honor, he your hasn't daughter. seen his kids in six months. He, That's because you refuse to let me I, see my weekend, children. I mean, I have, yes, I have tape at home, recordings of conversation that I ask him to take his kids, and he oh, doesn't. Please, I don't want to hear it. Sit down. What's this, furnace, what's this bill she's talking about? I have no idea what bill she is talking what's about. What's the bill? What's the $708.31? Where'd that oh, come from? Your Honor, I was having problems with my mail, and I don't know who got this credit card in my name, but I never received this credit card. I don't think I have to pay for something he got, which I'm sure he's really he got. I got it. He's the only one that knows my social security number. Oh, come on, Mrs. I don't even Ms. know your Mrs. address. Russell, what proof do you have that Mr. Russell, so some, somebody has a credit card. Yes. That you didn't apply for. I did not apply for it, And items were charged on it. Yes. And you believe it was Mr. Russell who did it? I'm pretty sure, yes. What proof do you have? I have the bill. And, and what proof do you have that Mr. Russell signed? I don't have no proof and for is that. And is the bill in the name of a woman? It's in the bill of my name, and it, my name's not even spelled right. Oh, God. And Mr. Messer, you don't even know how to spell your wife's name? I know. I don't even know where she lives. I don't know her and address So this has anything. happened since you separated? It, about three months later, I got a collection notice in the mail about this credit card. I, I never even seen this so credit card. So did you card. contact the credit card yes, company I did. and say that it, this yes. is not mine? Yes. And did they you said, say... They, they told me I have to show proof that it isn't mine, that I didn't do these charges. Well, how can I show proof when well, I don't even Well, first of all, card? you can show proof that you didn't apply for the card. Somebody had to fill out an application? Yes. All right, did you sign an application for no, that No, I card? did not. Okay, you have a signature that they can uh, decide whether it's yours or not. It can be deciphered by... By, by then, it was already in collection, and they, so? couldn't, they couldn't find the original application. Then that's the credit card company's problem. When divorce court continues... We're going to have to get a dictionary to look up friendship, because it might have... Is there a new there. definition? I don't know. I believe so. Divorce court continues in the case of Jacqueline Russell, who wants Mitchell to pay for charges he made on her credit card while living with Lisa. The point is, you haven't brought me any proof that it was Mr. Russell. None whatsoever. You said you didn't do it. You don't know who did it. No. So what you do is you contact the credit card company, and if they're not listening to you, then you get a lawyer. You fill out a fraudulent claim, a forged affidavit, saying that that was not your signature and you never applied. If the company cannot find the original application, that's their problem. The burden is on them to prove who applied for the card, and the burden is on them to prove who charged. And if they cannot prove that it was you, then you, you are not responsible for it. And if they can't prove it's Mr. Russell, if they believe it's him, then it's their problem. If you say, I think it was my ex-husband, the burden is on them to prove it. Okay. But I can't order that. You just think it was him because you're mad and you figured that he got it and spent the money on Miss Miller. It could have been Ms. Miller. You could have easily charged her. The point is, you don't know who did it. 
now exercise your rights under the law to find out, forget about who did it, to, to prove that you did not so that you can be abdicated from it. Okay. Now you're telling me that he's not paying child support and you worried about a doggone credit card bill as opposed to child support. Well, I can't afford the credit card bill. I, and then but I want you should have been in here asking for child support. I got child support. I finally went to court for that. Oh, and they're good. I'm glad to hear that. child support for a year now. All right. Court's adjourned. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. All right, Joe. <laughs> it's getting worse. We're going to have to get a dictionary to look up friendship because it might have. Is there a new there. definition? I don't know. I believe so. This is getting uh, crazy. I think thesaurus and, and, and Webster's and all of those need to redefine the word friend. My oldest son came to me one day and asked me, Mom, how do we benefit from my dad being here? I caught my wife Chantel cheating with another man when I was hiding in the trunk of her car. You're hitting the trunk of the car? I'm in the trunk of the car. You took a risk of dying? That's what I did. He told me, and I'm glad your mama did. She want me to stand up to my mama and cuss my mama out. Stop! No. You tread on dangerous grounds when you disrespect the mothers in this courtroom. They sacrificed too much for us, and I'm sure they've done the same for you. Now Chantel McLean faces Clovis McLean Jr. for the last time in this session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Judge Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Chantel McLean versus Lois McLean Jr. After four years of marriage, but I'm told it's been about a 20-year relationship, right? Yep. You want a divorce, and you want him to pay your spouse support. Yes. So what's going on after 20 years of being together and four years of which is marriage? Well, I've been waiting 15 years or longer for my husband to grow up and take responsibility and help me take care of his children and me as his wife. You've been waiting 15 years for him to grow up? Yep. I thought you wait 15, 15 years, years for children to grow up. Well, I did it, and... Why, why, why do you think he's not grown up? Claus does not help me with his kids. He does not take responsibility as a father yeah, to I his children. How kids. many children? We have three children together. The oldest is 13, and the youngest is 8. So ever since your children were born, you've been waiting for him to take responsibility? Yeah, basically. And after the first one, you didn't figure out that he wasn't going to do that? No. Okay, now why you want to have two more then? And well, then... Your Honor, I stuck in with him. I loved him. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. I stuck with him through thick no, and thin, your and Honor. I would still be there for your him Honor. if but... he would be the type of husband that he needs to be and take responsibility yeah, I, for his children. Please, he speak. does not do that. I have come to realize I'm now. I know it may have taken me a long time, but some people Ooh. it takes longer than others. That's true. And Clovis has been very verbally abusive to me. And I mean, I made a vow to him that I would be there, stick through him through thick and thin till death do us part. Whoa, okay, you're not dead yet, so now I'm not. But I want out of this marriage because a person can only take so much. He's abusive, not only to me, but to my children. My children do not deserve this. They did not ask to be in this world. He's their father. I cannot change that, no matter what. He's still their father. Whatever me and him go through should stay between me and him. It shouldn't have to deal with the children. So now he's whether, abusing the kids, too. Whether they're, they're there. You know what I'm saying? I would agree with that. The children... Yeah. Did not ask to be Basically, here. He's their lives, father. Though. He needs to support them. All My lives. oldest son is 13. He has chronic asthma. All Cross McLean would not even know what to do for his son if he was here right now and had an asthma attack. All right. But Let me hear from Mr. McLean then, because he keeps saying it's all that, a lie. Other than that, okay. Cross has not First been First of all, my wife just married 15 me. 15 years in a relationship. 15 years you've been waiting for somebody to grow That's up. That's what I'm saying now. And three babies. Basically, and you finally say, you're not going to ever now, grow up, and I want out. She told me 
Now, that's the other day we were talking. She said she had my babies just to keep me. Keep me for what? And then also, let me tell you this, Yana. When I first got disabled, my kidneys went out. I was on a dialysis machine. So diabetes. you're disabled? Yes. Diabetes, partly blind in one eye. He's not my, disabled my, now. Hold on a second. Why isn't he disabled now if he has diabetes? Because he had a transplant. He had a kidney it's transplant under, okay. and a oh, pancreas. Oh, oh. All right, Ms. McLean. Let me hear from Mr. McLean. Okay. Well, Yana, like I was saying, she said we've been together all this time. Now... Well, finish telling me you said you have diabetes. I have and diabetes, my kidneys, my kidneys failure, all that. I got a transplant. But well, I'm you still were one taking of the about, about 10, 10 or 20 different kind of medications. Okay, she know I'm partly blind in my one eye. The left eye. The left eye. I can, I can hardly see, see, the, out, the, I can out, see out the right one. I can see that you're favoring that eye. Okay, and then I got all the, you know, my knee, I had a knee replacement due to that, to the illness. Okay, I would try, I was, I'm going to school now, trying to, you know, just take up going to school because when she got, first got pregnant, I said, How you old go, are you, Mr. Mr. McClain? I'm 30. 30 years old. I'm 30 years old. And your body has been through all of that? All this. And she helping uh, with this problem, too. Fussing with me every day. My blood pressure. I didn't get blood, high blood pressure. Why you stop tell. having children knowing that you had all those illnesses see, and you wouldn't be there to take care of them? But, and you, you weren't able to do so. You weren't able to work. See, that's what I'm trying to say. When I, when, when I, when I just had sugar diabetes, I was working two jobs. I stopped school to work. When she told me she was pregnant, I went to school for a minute. Then I told my mom. I said, Mama, what should I do? She said, what you want to do? I said, well, I'm going to work. I told her, I said, you finish school, and I'm going to work. I worked the job until I couldn't work no more. And how long ago was that? When well, you first got together? When, we, when she first got pregnant with my son. See, That's when I first met her. before you married. Yes, before I met her. When I first met her, I thought it was just going to be one of wham, bam, you know, you know whatever. Cause we you was thought young it was going to be a one-night stand? Yeah, it was, I was young then. I was out there. But she had my baby, and I said, you know what? My daddy left me when I was five. And I wasn't going to do mines like that. I'm still not trying to do mines like that. But with her... She the one did it to me. When I first found out oh, when I was when I was getting the the, the aid for the aid, I mean for the social security, I went to the office and I had a gut feeling some said, Man, go home. Instead of me going to Dallas, I went home, heard her telling some man on the phone. That is not Give the me issue. your address. The so issue I hit it. Why isn't that the issue? The because I hit it the, the issue is the about him taking care of his kids. No, That's the, the whole issue, issue is about the relationship the and, how, issue. and what his well, attitude then he is needs about. To, he needs to go back to day one when I was pregnant and I found out about he was cheating. Okay, if but he first wants of all, to, stop. I mean, Ms. Is, McClain. That's not even the issue. Ms. McClain. Well, like I said, I'll take care Ms. of my kids. Mr. McClain, be quiet for a minute. Now, I allowed you to talk about what was on your mind and what you perceive as the issue that, you know, led to the breakdown of this marriage. I have to give him the same opportunity. Maybe you don't think it's an issue. It's not. Well, but not with you, but with him it is. Well, but at least I just want to hear. He has the right to state what he believes led to the breakdown of this marriage. Okay. And then, okay, I hid in the trunk of the car. Well, you, she cut you off, and I didn't hear your sentence okay, when you well, said without, okay. she walked in the house and heard okay, her talking I, on no, the phone I, to a I, man. I, I came from the Social Security. They told me I was going to receive my benefits for being disabled. I came home. I looked, you know, I was walking up to the steps. Something told me to come home. Don't go to Dallas. I missed Dallas's that day. I came home. I heard her telling the guy, give me your address. So I went down and hid in the trunk of the car. She went and got You hid in the trunk of the car? I hid in the trunk of the car. <laughs> hey, you took a risk of dying? That's what I did. Hid in the trunk of the car. Suffocating? Just All so you that. could ride with her? All that. And I did that, and then the trunk slammed on me, so I started making noise. She, the job jumps out the car. She comes Wait a minute, so when you hid in the trunk of the car, what happened? She drove to the house to go pick him up. She picked him up. Okay. And then, so she was, so the trunk had slammed on me, so I was making noise for the, she didn't know I was in the car. So she's talking about, she jumped, the guy jumps out the car. She uh, brings, take me driving around. I'm going to call the police. I'll take you to the police station. I was like, so I don't care. I'm in the trunk. I don't care. So she, first of so all, she drove me back to the house. So I get out. Now, when wait she a minute, brought, so you you're in the trunk hollering, and she wouldn't let you out. No, so I'm, I'm gonna take you to the police station. I was like, I don't care. And why she taking you to the police station? That's because you told you in the trunk he of the car. He had no business being in my trunk, and he's lying, talking about he came home. He was not living with me at the time oh we were separated. God. Then, when divorce court continues. So what's the right problem? There. Why are you so mad and angry? He's lying. Right. He's lying. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce court continues in the case of Clovis McLean Jr. as he testifies that he caught Chantel with another man while he was hiding in the trunk of her car. Did she drive you to the police station no, or she home? Didn't. No, she didn't. So she came home, she let me out the trunk. So 
her mother had passed in. Then what happened, I had said something I shouldn't have said to her, of being upset, just trying to make her mad. Because when I got the trunk, she got a little smile on her face, like it was cute. Yeah, I was mad. Yeah, it was funny to me. So I said you something to her trunk for what? that I shouldn't have. <laughs> well, okay, then after that, I, we still... Well, you're taking a risk of getting yourself killed we just to still, try to, to sneak around and see what your wife is doing. That's how much I love If he was doing what he was supposed to be doing, he wouldn't have to worry about what his wife okay, was doing. Okay, but then, like I said, then after oh, all that... Oh, I heard that line before. Then after, all, then after all that... Stop. So, in other words, he wasn't taking care of business. Never. Oh, so then why did you keep putting up with I it? I put up with it because I loved him and he well, was the father of Well, then if you loved him, it was okay kids. for him not she, to do what he was she supposed to be doing. No, it wasn't okay. She didn't love me. Oh. Now, that, me. there's an inconsistency. Now, when it came time to take care of your Mrs. children, McClain, it's never a reason why you shouldn't take care of your kids. But there's an inconsistency in what you're saying. If he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing, and therefore he wasn't the man that you thought he should be, and therefore you went to somebody else to get what you thought he wasn't giving you, just be quiet a minute then you had a number of years to recognize that before you married him and before you had three babies by Did you not? Yes, I did. So but what those I'm other men must not have been doing too much the, either. The cheating of the men, this and that, whatever you want to call it, is not the issue. The issue here is the children. The issue That's, is whatever well, I want to make the issue. Well, <laughs> when you tell okay, me, true, wait a minute, true, when, you sta yeah. when you stand before yeah. me and you're asking for spousal support, right? I have to know how you were living and what you were doing and what was going on in the marriage. Well, I was I was doing what I was supposed okay, to be well, doing. Okay, well, the issue is... rent by myself. Uh, all right. Yeah. Taking care of my children, making sure they have clothes on their back, shoes on their feet, backwards and forwards to school, taking my oldest son to the doctor, sitting at him in like the hospital. Like when, no, you did. I sit there with Sitting you. at him in the hospital when he has an asthma attack. Like, like I, I, I said, Floyd wouldn't even know what to do for his son if he was I right here. Know what about, now what about during court? the time? Now, I can understand that your husband was sick. Just now, Hold on a second. So how long have you had and been dealing with all of these illnesses? Okay, the, the kidney failure and the diabetes. Diabetes I had like about since I was uh, 13. Okay, the kidneys just started like about about the last four, four five, five years. Her mother told me that my kidney's probably going out. Her mother used to be on the Dallas machine too. So in the last five years? Yes. Okay, I stayed on the kidney machine like about so two. So that means that it's been shortly after you got married. Yeah, as soon as we got married. Before we got married, that same person that Trump went, I found the letter about this thick, this thick, telling him that she wish she'd never married me. She'd been lying to me, talking about my oldest son is his child. You are such a liar. If I'm lying to you, Judge, you my kidneys, I can drop dead in your courtroom well, what's right the now. Point? Now, you don't need to go that far. <laughs> no, we don't lying have to take like it that far. I don't want you to die in my courtroom. I, I'm telling you the truth. No. I, if she lied to the God <laughs> when we got married, she lied to you. So... My life is all about, that's married? why I said, I said she lied to God when we got married, said she going to be with me to death, do us part through sickness and health. But she's telling you. She so in other know. words, you were together, and then once you got married, your kidneys failed. Everything. And now. His kidneys failed before we got married. Oh, my God. Right when my mother was dying, Claude was in the hospital. That's when I just got the shunt put in my own. They knew it was going out, but I just got a shunt put in my own. When her mother died, I left the hospital to be in, by her side. She told me, baby, go back to the hospital. I left the hospital, snatched IVs out of my own car, got a ride to come. Her daddy came and got me. Matter of fact, her father picked me up. And, and you took the IVs out your arm I so you could go be with your wife? Arm to be by her side. No, he got permission from the hospital well, to come home. If he got permission, why would I take the IV out of my arm? Wait a minute, wait a minute, Ms. McClain. Lying. But if he was in the hospital, hold on a second. Now, let's just get real about this. And give credit where credit is due. I am. Just, just be quiet. Take a deep breath. See, you want to minimize it. If he's in the hospital and he has an IV in his arm, he's not in there for his health. He's in there because of his health, and they're treating him. Exactly. So even if he asked but the doctor's permission, be quiet. Have... And that's so fake what's the right problem? There. Why are you so mad and angry? He's lying. And I have been dealing with this that's mess. Fake. So he wasn't in the hospital? Yes, fake. Fake. he was in the hospital. He did have an IV? No, he didn't. What, what did he no, have? No, he didn't. He didn't have anything yet. How they were prepared because I had came here and visited you. That's how I know. Why was he in the hospital? He got permission from the doctors to come home because my mother was dying. And why was he in the hospital? Because he was ill. His kidneys were failing. My point, exactly. Whether the IV was in his arm. He did not have an IV in his arm Mrs. at the McClain, time. Mrs. McClain, but he was at the hospital because he was sick. 
Yes. And he and left he, the hospital. He didn't leave. He didn't leave. He got permission. He wanted to come. I kept telling him he didn't need to come home, come there and be with me. When Divorce Court continues. Are you tread on dangerous grounds when you disrespect the mothers in this courtroom. Because that I will not tolerate. Closed captioning for Divorce Court provided by... If you would like to have the judge hear your case in Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Chantel McLean as she testifies that Clois never respected her or her family. Okay, after my mom died, we buried her. He told me, mm, I'm glad your mama did. That's the thing I just told you. And I never not too saying. long ago, Mother's Day. At least I have a mother to be there with. Okay, At least I have a mother that can judge, appreciate me. Time, you what can you do? All you can do is go to the cemetery, talk to your mother at her grave. That's all I'm you can do. At least I have no, a mother. Mr. Mr. McClain, you're not that cruel. No, no, I'm not he that cruel, but I'm going to show you cruel. Okay, hold on. And hold on. Hold on. The problem is... Did you say those things to her cruelly no, about your mother? I'm glad she's dead I or anything to that effect? I, say, I said that and I was wrong for the reason why I said that because every day she get mad at me. That's why she talking about the relationship is messed up because when, me, when she put me out on the street, sick as I am, I goes to my mama. That's all I got is my mama. She want out. me to stand up to my mama and cuss my mama no. out behind the no. mess. She do. No. I'm not going to burn my no. riches with my mama no. for this. So no. both no, of you, here's, no. is, so both no. of you are no. disrespectful of each no. other's parents. You the know only what? I'm not, I'm not disrespected, disrespected his mother was when he said, said something to that about about I said that one time. Let me tell you something saying that. Stop. Grow up and stop doing what we refer to as playing the dozens. That is wrong. You know it's wrong. Yes, I, I know. No matter how angry you are, wrong. no matter how angry you are, nothing justifies those kind of comments. And vice versa. No matter what he's done to you or has not done, nothing justifies your negative comments and the name calling of his mother. She, your parents, didn't create this mess. No, they didn't. That's what my mama be trying to tell her. What you and Pooh got wrong. Don't try to tell me I, I don't want you to say another thing about each other's mother. Do you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Not another word. Leave it out. Cause okay. you tread on dangerous grounds when you disrespect the mothers in this courtroom. Cause that I will not tolerate. They sacrifice too much for us, and I'm sure they've done the same for you. Mine has. And you won't, you See, won't disrespect that's, that's them. That's where it come from, Maybelline. I, I don't want to hear it anymore. Okay, I said well, I'm, that. I'm gonna leave it alone on that. But like I said, she married me basically for the money. Thought I was gonna die. He don't have nothing. Money. I'm telling you. So, so if he doesn't have anything, how can, I, how really how can he about. just say that? So now, Mrs. McClain, you have not heard yourself. Yeah. You have not heard what you have said. Because you just now said he doesn't have anything. But you walk into my court asking for spousal support. Your husband is sick. He's been sick a long time. Whether you like it, whether you want to accept it, whether you believe it, whether you think he's faking, whether you think it's wrong, right, or whatever, you got to deal with the facts and the realities of life. Can nobody fake diabetes, kidney failure, a shunt in your arm, knee replacement, just any number of things? And you're saying to me, I want him to now take care of me and pay spousal support. Well, you know what? What you did was what a wife is supposed to do. The divorce court continues. It's overwhelming. It gets you down. But it does not justify being mean. It does not justify adultery. Divorce court continues in the case of Chantel McLean as she testifies that she wants Clois McLean Jr. to pay her spousal support. You probably feel overwhelmed. I've done it all. I've taken care of him. I've taken care of the kids. I've been the breadwinner. Yeah, I've, been, I've gotten all, I can't get the emotional support from him. But unfortunately, this court can't give your spousal support. It's overwhelming. It's burdensome. It gets you down. I understand that very well. But it does not justify being mean. 
does not justify being cruel. It does not justify adultery. It does not justify calling names, disrespecting parents. And Mr. McClain, your illness does not justify your lack of responsibility in terms of your children. Saying, it does not, not justify you not spending some time with them and assisting them. Her fault. Nope. Okay. Uh, I, just, I, just, I don't want to hear it. I'm, I'm going to order, order you. And I'm going to order you. I just gave and her $150 this month I'm and brought my kids. I'm not works. ordering spousal support, but I'm going to order you into mediation to deal with the custody issue. See, and Mrs. McLean, made... I, oh, I need to order you into some counseling services because you do have three children together and you are going to have to continue to deal with this man because he's the father of your children. And at some point, God forbid, we don't know when we're going to die. He may outlive all of us. But in the event that he doesn't, you can't be cruel to your children, to them, if, when, when that happens. You got to be there for them, I'm and you got to be ready to be a He's mother. He's the one that's not. Even He even tells my kids. I, I don't want to hear anymore. I really I'm don't. I'm not your dad. All right. That's the order of the court. Your request for spousal support is denied. Court's adjourned. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. That's all that is. That's all that is. That's because 12 years of a relationship was OK, up and down, in and out. But now, it's awfully burdensome to her. Oh, yeah. He got sick right at marriage, and he's been sick ever since. So she can't go through 12 more years. I'm here today because I want him to pay for the removal of the tattoo on my lower back. I shouldn't have to pay for a tattoo. I didn't force her to do it. It says Joe. Joe, OK. <laughs> Joe? There's no last name on here. Since there's no last name, yeah. it'll be OK if you just go find you another Joe. <laughs> exactly. Today, Ulyssa Rabina says Joseph Jefferson forced her to get his name tattooed on her back. And now that the marriage is over, she wants him to pay to have it removed in this session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Judge Mabelin Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Ulyssa Rabinus versus Joseph Jefferson. And Mrs. Rabinus, I'm advised that after 10 months of marriage, you want a divorce. Is that right? Yes, I do. Now tell me what could have gone so wrong in 10 months that you're ready for a divorce? I probably the ink hasn't dried on the papers at the county recorder's office. Well, I want to divorce him because he actually, uh, like a month after we got married, he married someone else. Huh? He married someone else a month after we got married to fix her papers for money. Who are you supposed to be, Don Juan? <laughs> no, I was, I mean, One was... month after you and he married. Yeah. He went and married another person. How'd you find this out? I just found out about like two months ago. And what did he have to say about it? It was only a matter of like just money. All he cared about was his money because she was paying him. She paid him what? Money. To marry him? See her that. To fix her papers. She's hearing things, man. You Wait a minute. So how did you find out that he had married someone else a month after he married you? I, on his voicemail, she told me. I called her up and I told her I'm his wife. And she's like, oh, well, I'm his wife. She said, guess what? So am I. Yeah. What is nah. that all about, Mr. Jefferson? She just, she's, she's heard things from my friends about things. I, I went to Vegas, partied with some, had a party with the friends, and ended up getting a little drunk. I'm married. What do you mean she That's heard things you from your friends? Did my you marry friends. somebody else? Yes, I married somebody else, but I'm not, I don't know what she's talking about, money and all this crap. I just, I just married That's her. what you told me. I didn't, she's crazy. What kind of money? What are you talking about? Yeah, she's tripping. He says that, She's um, a millionaire or something? That's what he says. <laughs> Oh, I wish. A millionaire marrying him? I would be there right now. <laughs> I mean, oh. not that millionaires don't marry ordinary people, but is she a millionaire for real? I don't know what she's talking. She, I, I basically don't even talk to the girl anymore. No you probably don't even know her name, huh? <laughs> basically. So you were... I stopped talking to her the day after I married her. So you, did you go to Las Vegas with her or did you no, meet her I in met, Vegas? I met her. Me and my friends were out there partying. I met her and her friends and we were just partying and just spur of the moment went to one of those cheap little chapels, got married. 
But you were already married, Mr. Jefferson. I wasn't thinking. I was drunk. I wasn't thinking. I made a mistake. Now, you weren't that drunk that you didn't know you were married. Now, come oh, on. Oh, I knew I was getting married. I knew what I was doing at the time. You didn't know. You knew that you were already married. Yeah, I did. You knew you but were going this, to a chapel. The marriage with her wasn't like a marriage marriage. It was all, she pressured me into marrying her. I anyways. pressured you into getting married? You pressured me. She, Whatever. When I met her, she was married in the beginning. And she didn't tell me for what, two legally years? legally separated. Two okay. years. Legally what? And then she's, the whole two years forcing me, like bugging me to get married. Then the, the marriage wasn't even, was, the, she was divorced a month before we got married. Oh my goodness. So you, you divorced no. within a month and married him. And he married you and married somebody else within a month. This month thing is no. really going on. I had her husband calling me all the time. After two years of finding out, he was calling me, telling me stuff I didn't know. What was he telling you? Telling me about his son and stuff. I didn't even know she had a son. Oh, my goodness. She told me her son was her brother when I met her for two years. How old was the son? And she said it was her he's, brother. He's five now. He was, um, two. when I met her, he was, he was about a little over one years old. She, uh -huh. she came to live with me. Her son was never around, never. She, she went home maybe one day a month. And her Where did son you never... people meet? Somewhere in the backwoods or something? <laughs> Where did you meet? <laughs> she, I mean, she denied her son to. I, I thought now, it was I her brother. Where, I mean, some things are easy to find out. No, but so it's, it's, it's not easy her? if you don't bring them around. I met her at. She's one of those little ride. Um, little I mean, what? Like, what well, I call him is ride horse. She likes anything with any nice car, or nice bike. That's the type of language she uses. See, he's ride like, horse. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. Was that she, the expression? I was, I was driving a nice car. I'm trying to learn something here. Did you say ride horse? Yeah. Okay, what does that term mean? That's a new one to me. She likes anything with nice nice cars, nice bikes. When whatever. you met him, what turned you on to him? The car? What? No, it wasn't the car. What was it? It wasn't the car. It was him. When I met her, I was trying to I don't know. It was probably a, a sweet talk because he's so sweet talk So why did you have a son? Yes. So did you tell him your son was your brother? No, I didn't tell him. I mean, oh, I felt that I had just barely met him, and I felt he had, like, I didn't have to explain my whole entire life to him, you know? Yeah. After two years? Very but you normal. started to live years. with him. Oh, you're crazy. You started to live with him before you married him. Is that right? Yeah. And you didn't think that you needed to explain anything to him? Like, I have a child? He knew by then. He no, knew. I didn't. Yes, you, you did. You were I woke up one morning, and there was a letter there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> she was gone. She left to work or whatever. There was a letter. Was there or not a letter? And what did the letter say? She said, Joe, because she had brought her little brother over the, the, the day previous. And my you mean the son brother? Yeah. Uh-huh. My brother has a kid, and he was over there playing together. And we were out there playing catch and everything, and she seen that we were adapting to each other good, and she was just feeling kind of sorry, I guess. The next morning, I woke up. She was gone. There was a little letter there with a little heart sticker on there, and it, she explained it. Look, I'm sorry to lie to you. I understand if you're mad at me, but I really love you, and she's all, I want to let you know that he is my son, that you were right all along. Because I used to, every so often, she used to show up to my house. You know, She was living with me with a car seat, and she said, well, I had to watch my little brother today. I had to do this and that. He said you dated for three and a half years before you married. Yeah. Where did you keep your son? Living with me. You were living with me. Where was your son? You know why? Your son's never lived okay. with us. You know why? Because my mom didn't let me take my son around you because of the way you were. Okay? We, That's why. I, I didn't have a family to A bad example? Two years. He was a bad example for your son? Bad yeah. example. And Her when did you figure that out? Me. Excuse me. When did you figure that out? From the start. <laughs> From the start. That's what I thought. So you had a son that was two years old. He was a bad example or bad influence in that he did what? Why was he a bad example? Because he would just party all the time. He would teach my son bad words. Mm -hmm. She drinks and parties just as much as Well, me. you know what? I already know that. So if he was a bad example for your son because he drink and party and, and curse and use foul language, can I understand why wasn't he also a bad example for you? Why were you attracted? You must like that kind of lifestyle. No. Obviously. No, he, he would always just say things to me like, well, no, I love you. I really, I love you. And I'm going to change. I promise. And he told you that two days after he met you, right? No. <laughs> no. Basically. How long did it take for him to tell you he loved you? He would call me all the time. It seemed like he was really interested. About how long after you met him did he tell you all that? A couple months. That's what I figured. She met me. So now, wait a minute, Ms. Ms. Mrs. Rabinas. You're young, and so are you, Mr. Jefferson. But you're not that young. Now, you understand within two months of somebody calling you talking about, I love yeah, you. crazy. They don't know anything about love. They don't even know, he didn't even know anything about you. Didn't know you had a child. Didn't know you had been married before. You didn't know anything about him. But now, wait a minute. She, I, knew, more, hold, hold. she knew more about me than she's saying when it's she not, met me. But it seems a little unfair that I'm, all, I'm over here now. I don't understand this, bigger, this marriage of yours in Las Vegas. When divorce court continues... Don't you know anything about honesty, integrity, loyalty, commitment? Have you ever heard those words?
If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Joseph Jefferson as he testifies that he married another woman just one month after marrying Ulyssa. I made a mistake. That's it. That's all oh, I can say. I'm foot. taking care of it now. I'm taking care of it. I'm trying to get this divorce over. I'm trying to I'm getting an annulment already. It's already been filed in Las Vegas back in J December. So you didn't know this woman. You picked her up at, at, on the strip somewhere, hanging a, out in the casinos. At a bar, yeah. <laughs> Went and got married. On a dare, or did you just decide you Gosh. loved her too? I don't love. I don't, or nah. did you tell her the same lie? No, nah, it was just a party. I don't know. It was, it was just party party. and drinking. That's it. But how did this idea of marriage come about? I don't the know money? exactly how it came along, but we just drove up into the casino. Was there 10 minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes? <laughs> drove back to the hotel and party, then went to the strip club. What was this woman looking like? What was going on? Nothing. She was. Obviously, I was, I was attracted didn't to her at the night. Yeah, I was. You were what? I was attracted to her that night. Attracted to her body. Everything about her. You didn't know anything about it but her body? Yeah, but that, that's what I've taken. Everything about her. Her looks, her personality, to her toe. attitude. She wasn't, right. she just wasn't, you know what I mean? She wasn't. You wouldn't know what she was like. First of all, you were that's, not and in I a, don't want to know. You were not in the right state of mind to evaluate what she was really like. And secondly, you were just looking at outward appearance. You didn't know what was going on with the heart. And just like men rape women, Women play games with men, too, yeah. but you people don't think that. I understand all that. That's you know, they do it is. all the time. Get you drunk, have sex with you, take every dime you have, and you'll never know what happened the next day. Mm -hmm. It's a big game. You better grow up. I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying to take care of everything now. And the two of you don't have any children together? No. no. Thank, Ooh, God. thank God for that. <laughs> but now you want, what do you want from this court today? I want him to pay for the removal of a tattoo I have of his name. You put a tattoo of his name on your body? Yes. Where'd you do that? Where? Yeah, where on your body? In my lower, in my waist, in my back. And now you want it off? Yes. Well, all you got to do is keep your clothes up. Nobody yeah. let to see it. Exactly. It you can't, it you can't matter. see it with your clothes on. It doesn't matter. He, he always tells me, he always tells me, okay, even though we're not together or whatever, when you find somebody and he's with you, he's going to be seeing my name in your back. So Okay, so why'd you put his name on your back in the first place? Because he wanted me to prove my love for him because he's moving to Hawaii. So he said, oh, babe, get a tattoo of my name, you know, so I can see that you love me, and I'll get one oh, of your name. On. When he was going to Hawaii, for how long? I was moving there. To move there, and he, he wanted after, me to... Before or after you got married? No, we, oh, before. way before. We got, this happened back in 99. She got that so tattoo. So you were going together. He was about to leave you to go to Hawaii, and he wanted you to tattoo his name as a proof of your love for Yeah, him. because he was supposed to go to That's Hawaii so he, can, so he can start a, a new life over there and get a job, mm -hmm. and then he was going to fly And then he was going to send for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you went for that, too. <laughs> <laughs> so then you put the tattoo on. Yeah. And how would that prove your love for him way over in Hawaii? How would that change the fact that you may meet somebody else and be attracted to them just because you had his name on your back. Did she you really was, think that was. that would keep her loyal? No, I, I, didn't, I didn't make the offer. She made the offer. She's all, babe, we, what happened was I was split up with her before. Mm -hmm. February 13th, she calls me up. Let's go to, let's go to Vegas for um, Valentine's Day. Let's go all, all treat, this and that. So she took me up to Vegas. We stayed in Vegas for Valentine's Day. Valentine, the next day, the 15th, we came down. And I, my flight took off on the 16th at like 8 a.m. To go to Hawaii? Yeah, to leave to, leave to Hawaii. She drove me back down and we stopped off the freeway because she was talking about tattoos and all this crap. No, I wasn't. So, I, so you just went to some freeway tattoo artist? Yeah, no, no, it was, it was a legal shop and stuff. She had to sign a waiver saying that, you know, she, that she, wasn't doing it, she was doing it on her own free will. She wasn't under alcohol. She wasn't Look, under drugs. It, she was all, a waiver. it was all a payback. Did you get one part. too? No, not of her name. No, I'll never get a girl's name on me. I bet you never went to Hawaii yet either, huh? I moved, I moved to Hawaii for... For how long? Two about months? About six months. Mm -hmm. He had me visit him for a week, and then after I left, a, another girl, his other girlfriend, went for a week. Oh, you she really She wants to talk about this. I, when I moved, I moved back from Hawaii just because I thought we were going to start a relationship. I moved back from Hawaii. We moved in together. I find pictures of her. She, Negligence, she didn't take them away. She should have put everything away. She, she has pictures of her with guys partying at the clubs, everything, the whole time that I was in Hawaii. How old are you people? <laughs> 23. 23. 23. 
at 23 years old, I've heard about partying. Oh, I've heard about though. sexual relations and relationships back and forth between different people. I've heard about lies and deceit. Don't, don't you know anything about honesty, integrity, loyalty, commitment? Have you ever heard those words? And those are just foreign words to you. When Divorce Court continues. Since there's no last name, yeah. it'd be okay if you just go find you another joke. <laughs>
Now you want me to order him to pay for you to have it removed, which is about $2,100, I'm told, right? Yes. I don't think so. Because you made a choice. Sometimes we have to live with the consequences, not all the time, you have to live with the consequences of the choices you make. That's why it's better for you to make set choices that are sound and use sound judgment. But it was all in agreement. Well, you know, that's what I'm saying. Sound judgment. Just because he agreed to get your name on him, he said he did, but even if he did, if he wasn't doing it at the same time, the point is, you need to decide for me. Do I want this forever on my body? Is this going to last? What will this mean? What happens if we break up? What happens if I meet another man? You need to think about all of those kinds of things before you make decisions like this. Just like before you married him, the two of you. You should have looked at, will he be committed? What is happening with him? You need to get into some classes for self-esteem and for, for decision-making and choices, for analysis, all right? Because you're making poor choices in terms of your relationships. Obviously, if you already have a child that's five and you're not with that father, and then you get with him and, he, and that didn't work, and you've been in other relationships that aren't working, you're making some very poor choices about your life as well, and there is something going on inside that you need to get control over and you need to find out what's happening with you, all right? Now, I wish you well, but I have to deny your request. Court's adjourned. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. Well, Joe, <laughs> hope nobody thinks it's you no, by this tattoo. No, 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 no. Not me. Well, like I said, at least she didn't get a last name, so it's, it means that she can. Uh, she needs to put a little circle it. with a slash through it over the top of it or something. No joke. Yeah. That well, you know silly. what? The way the tattoo is, look at it. The way it is, she can go back to a tattoo artist and oh, just yeah. change that to all O's and make it do circular, some kind of design. She can That's do what she can do. She can get rid of it. Cover it. Just People do that all the time. Let her think a little bit and get creative. I'm here today to get $1,000 from my husband for my personal property he intentionally left when we moved home. I owe you nothing, you will get nothing. Ayana, you are an adult and you need to start acting like one. You like going home and being with your family, she likes going out. Your Honor, I do not have no friends to do That's today. not my fault. It is your fault. You got another man, I don't control nothing over there. You the one who constantly kept running the streets, Your Honor. wanting to go out all the time. So once you married him, why did you want to change? Because he put me up on a pedestal, Your Honor. And then he took you off? And he kicked it out from under me. Now Ayanna Johnson says she is tired of her husband, Priest Pajay, trying to control her and wants him to pay her $1,000 for the things she had to leave behind when she moved her children away from him in today's session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Judge Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. This is the matter of Ayana Johnson versus Priest Puget. And I'm advised that you've been married for five years and you want a divorce. And Mrs. Johnson, you're asking for $1,000 for some clothes and collectibles that Mr. Puget destroyed? Yes. Well, All not right. actually destroyed. Left behind? Yes. All right, tell me about it. Uh, we lived in Texas. We had moved there from home, from Indiana, that's where we're from. And um, we had separated, and when it was time for us to move back, Mr. Bajay stated to me that, for one, I could have everything in the apartment besides his personal clothes right. and stuff. And when it came time to move back, Mr. Bajay had a plan in his head that he had not worked out, obviously. The day of the move, nothing that he had planned worked out. All we had was a cargo van. We loaded it up with as much stuff as we could. And a lot of my stuff had got left behind. He promised me that my we would go got back. Left behind too, though. But we she's talking didn't... about her stuff right now. He promised me that we would go back to get the stuff because we had no way to take it with us when we left. We can only. What take happened so to much. the plans that he had laid for you to move? He the didn't plans, pay the truck. The plans that he laid was for us to rent a van, a cargo van, 
load our stuff, hitch the car, his car to the back of it, and load the rest of the stuff in his car. And so what happened? They would not allow us to hitch the car to the cargo van. So we had to leave his car and everything else, which I trusted him to go back because he had paid on that car, had the payments made up, everything on it. So I trusted that we was going to go back. But when we got home, Mr. Paget had no interest in going back to get the stuff. In I, Texas? Right. No intention. Neither and why did you go back to get it? I could not go by myself. I didn't, for one, I didn't know my way around Texas well enough in order to fly down there, go to the you airport, go get it. You know how to get a map? Yeah. You can't read a map? Yeah, I can read a map, but I, I felt like it was part of his responsibility, oh. too, because of his car. I mean, the only thing that I really trusted and believed he was going to go back and get was that car. I mean, I so really... So what did you leave there that he didn't go back to get? Clothes. I had boxes of clothes. I had shoes. My children's clothes. My children's toys. I had um, collectibles. Uh, two different collections of things. So you felt that it was his responsibility to go back to Texas and get... Not so much his responsibility what, to go get it, but his responsibility to hold up his promise that he made to me that we was going to go you didn't back. Make so if he effort. made a promise to you to go back and get the items and then he didn't keep the promise, right. then what do you do after that? When, you, when it's obvious to you that somebody's not keeping a promise, what do you do? Just keep saying, but you promise? No, when we, it was like I called him and I'm, you know, I'm trying to find out what's the issue, why we can't go back, if it's money. You know, my family was, was trying to help you know, to go back and stuff, but he had no interest. He had no interest. Oh, he didn't want to talk about Jay, it. Tell me no, why. What's no. going on? We both agreed to go back. We didn't go back. We procrastinated on it, and we left everything there. Your and Honor, the stuff got sold. The stuff, the stuff. Or well, something gone. happened to it anyway. So it's gone. So why were you, why were you going back from Texas to Indiana anyway? We had separated. And my job transferred me back to South no, Bend. No, no, we separated when we were there. Right. And um, I ended up losing my job, and I moved back in with him. Me and my kids, we moved, and our kids, we moved back together. And I got sick of. We was. Three kids and me and him, we were staying in a one-bedroom apartment, and I was tired. I was ready to come home, and I said, I'm going home. To your family? Yeah, to, you know, to start over, because I knew when I came home, I would have a place to stay, I would have a job. We agreed to go home. Why did you separate when you were in Texas? It just, it just broke down. Just it got tired. It broke down. It did but break one, down. We were, the whole time we was married, he treated me like a child. Like I was his child. Because you acted like a child. Not his wife. What not do you mean wife. by that? telling me where to go, you know, having problems with me. Like, if I go to the store, he did not want me to leave the house. I mean, I, not like he, in, like, wanted to tie me up and keep me in the house, but every time, like, if I would go to the store or want to go somewhere, it would be a problem. We it would was get never arguing. a problem. It's just that so you, you never knew how to, to come work. home. And even you when didn't I know how to, to come home. Even when I would go to work, Your Honor. No. Even when I would go yeah, to work, you go to he work. would have something to say. She gets off Why at 1.30. Why you leave so early? She gets off at 1.30, but don't show up to home to 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, so what did you think she was doing? We did. What did you think I, she was doing if she's off at 1.30 and come home at 4 in the morning? Whatever. He is so lying. you didn't trust her, though? Well, after a while, no, I didn't try. I stopped trusting her. Why do you say he treated you like a child? Because he did. He wanted to dictate to me what to do, when to do it. He treated me like I was one of I the kids. I did not want to dictate. So I just wanted you, you to be a responsible way, mother permission. and parent and, yeah. and wife. That's what I wanted. And he talking about going outside. Did he outside. tell you how to wear your hair and how to wear your clothes and how he to would, brush your teeth? And he wouldn't let me cut my hair. hair. He would not let me cut no, my hair. That, no, that's a lie. Your hair that's is cut, isn't it? That's a lie. Not together either. Oh, so now you got freedom. Yeah. And, and he, he wouldn't, and he, so wh how did he keep you from cutting your hair? Because he was my husband, and my husband told me, do not cut my hair. He do not want me with short hair. He liked long hair, so I did not cut my hair. So when you met him, you had long hair? Mm-hmm. So that was his attraction. Why do you think you had a right to tell her how to wear hair? I didn't tell her how to wear hair. Did you tell I, her how to wear I, I would, clothes? I would tell her, you look nice. I like, your, I like your hair long. Now, it's her choice if she wants to cut her hair. Just like her, it was her choice to do anything that so she wanted to do. So what would happen if she had cut it while you were living there, together? It still wouldn't have been a problem. What about the way she dresses? Sometimes it was a problem because, you know, we've had our problems with like that. Like what? Well, once she walked out of the hotel in some Daisy Dukes and a little bitty shirt, I mean, I thought that was inappropriate. Your Honor, I and so you had an argument over, over that? No, we did not have an argument over but I was over 18. Yes, we did. I, I do not, I don't really wear provocative clothes. What you mean you were like over that. 18? When did you I marry? Mean, that's when, I'm, when I was 19. But, that's so what you, but you told me you were 20. Yeah. Okay, so you said I was age. over 18, meaning so I was me, an adult. I'm an adult. You, like, I'm not a, a little child that should not be running around in half shirts. Of, I'm not no little 11-year-old that can't, you know, wear what they want to wear. It's not like I'm was provocative all the time. We were out of town. We were in a in a big city, in a party city, a party weekend. Yeah, I had on some short shorts and a half shirt, you know. When we walked out of that... And you um, figured because you was fully grown and over 18, you were able to wear cute. what you wanted to wear. I was trying to be cute. Yeah, oh, I would be cute. She was trying to be cute for who? 
just to be cute, to be me, to be out. My family was there. Everybody was there. And then, they like, even I was had out. problems with what you had my on. My mama told me I was cute. They took pictures of me. No, they, they, my mama had never I, seen me. I stood me. right there when you walked out of that room. And your mom. Yeah, they and all the, Yeah, they yeah, yeah. were surprised yeah, to see was surprised to like see that. She was very surprised. She, she said, go in there and change your clothes. And how did she say it? But she said it jokingly. You said, trying to make it seem like she was coming at me. So were you trying to relive your, try to be 16 again? No, it wasn't even that. I just, I thought it was cute. I wanted to be cute, and I put it on. We walked down the street, and he would tell you he had. To, he was walking behind me with this attitude and his look. This look I'm on his face. I was more embarrassed than anything. Then you should I mean, have left this, like this you is did. my you wife. So this is my wife. You Respect so me as that. That's all I asked you for. When divorce court continues. Your Honor, I do not have no friends to this That's day. That's not my fault. It is your fault. How is that my fault? Your Honor, when me and him were together. You got another man. I don't control nothing over there. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court. Call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Priest Pujay, who says his wife, Ayana Johnson, was more interested in partying with her friends than being a mother and a wife. According to the papers I have, it says you were trying to revert back because you feel like you missed out on your youth by getting married so young and having two kids, so now you're trying to catch up. And it, I mean, not Is that what you're that. trying to it's do? It's just that I wanted to be able to go out with my friends sometimes, spend time with my you friends. You went out with your friends all I the time. Be, you did all not have the to lie. Time. No, I did not. My, Your Honor, but I do not have no kids. friends to this day. Yeah, but and if my kids at home with my husband, with their dad, they should be fine. They should be and you should be able to go out with your girlfriend. Spend some time. Spend some time out of the house away from him. You go do whatever she wanted to do. Yeah, I should be able to spend some time out of the house. And you couldn't do that. No. Your Honor, I do not have no friends to this to day. Do I do not have no friends to this That's day. That's not my fault. It is your fault. How is that my fault? Your Honor, when me and him were together. You got another man. I don't control your nothing Honor, over there. when Priest and I were together, I had friends like through high school. I married him when I was with, got with him my last year of high school. Senior year. Yeah, and I'm, you know, we got married shortly after that. All my friends from high school and the kid, the females and stuff that I had grew up with, that I was going out with, he didn't like none of them. The first day he would meet him, or if he would see him a couple times, my best friend, he only met her twice, but he always got something bad to say about him. You don't need to be hanging around with her, this, that, and the other, on and on. So I wouldn't, because I knew he was going to have a problem with no, it. No, y'all hung out so all the time. So then you start having your babies. He's lying. So then you start having babies. And he thought you should stay at home with them. I no, so. I stayed at home. I would go to work. I would come home. How many hours so a day did you work? So you were a couch watch? potato? 10 and to 12 hours. And what about singing? Hours. You didn't go to rehearsal? And, you and I went to group, rehearsal. And you weren't doing all that? Yeah, what was I doing? Sitting at home. Calling sitting me. At so home. you felt that you were the only one standing at home taking yeah. care of the kids while he was out having fun? And no, you had enjoyed your life. It case. ain't even about to have fun. He was out of the house. He was away from us, spending time in the world, Twice away week. from us. Twice a week. I it's would better go, than I zero go. times a week. You it's went out all the time. You would go out to Why the club, you to the club. Mondays. First it started yeah. one day. Hold then on, it started. What you say? Then it started two days. Then it was three days. Then it was four days a week. And how long did that last? In the clubs. Well, I For thought you were month. working. Why did you do that? Your Honor, it, 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 is that why you lost your job? Because you were partying too no, much? No, Your Honor, I, well, I have quit jobs because he, him telling me, you don't need to work. I make enough to support no, both of no. us. If I would come home, One if job, anybody worked. When we worked, first got together, the first year we were together, the very first year. What happened? The one, that one job, when we, moved, when we first moved in together, that was the only job. The only job? The that only job to quit. that I told her to quit because I made, then we started having kids. We had, and, then, it, the kids and so you started needed coming. to both work then? We both needed to work. I was working at temporary agencies for one. Them jobs do not last, them are not long-term jobs. So why were you always at temporary agencies? I was never working had for a, a temporary job agency. Over a year. Never held a job for a year. So? No. Why not? That's right. That's right. I sure haven't. And you want to brag about it? No, but he's, I'm not going to lie about it. No, I didn't. Your Honor, he was making enough so money. So why not? Why couldn't you hold a job over a year? For one? Well, it wasn't you had an attitude problem? No. You That's wouldn't go to work? Problem. It's no. the attitude. No, for one. I got, her, I got her job out there where I worked at, and they let her go from out there. That was through a temporary because, agency. No, you got let go because of your attitude. I what did she did? Cut somebody out? I did not. I did not. No, I did not cuss nobody. So out. what happened, Mr. 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 She Mr. got let go because of her attitude. She was she was hounding the super. One, one, one of the super. No, told you one of the supervisors. One of the supervisors came to me. Why he came to me and said, "Hey, look, you got to do something about about your wife." You know, I said, "Hey, man, she works in your department." Because they if, didn't if want you guys to come to me keep and tell her, me they'd rather run to the other department if and you say guys something are gonna, to him. If you guys need to take care of her, y'all take care of her. So what was he saying about it? No, he's talking about she would get on the PA system, joking around and stuff, always snapping back at him every time he asked her to do something. 
That's your subordinate didn't know how to respect your supervisor? That's a lie. His, the, my supervisor, for one, was one of his friends. Well, it seemed like to me that you were concerned about going out and you didn't have enough time to yourself and you wanted to go out and party a little bit more. To do, yeah, at least spend some time out the house. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So are you able to do that now? Yes. Yes, I am. So why are you able to do that now and you're not with your husband and you have two kids and it's just you? Your how are you able to do that kids. now? Yes, I have three kids. So how are you able to do that now? Time. My boyfriend allowed me time to spend with my oh, friends. Oh, your and boyfriend me. takes care of the kids. No, I take care of my own kids. Well, I mean, if you, you, you can't take care of the kids and you're out. Well, if they spend it, they spend a weekend with him sometimes, or they might spend a night over my sisters or something like that. Well, that's but not what you said. You said my boyfriend allows me. Well, you me saying the that? Time. What's the difference between me and him? If me and him would be home by ourselves, if the kids wasn't there, he would not take me out. The divorce court continues. You had a child young, mm -hmm. you were at your mother's house, and all you could do was stay at home. Right. Right then and there, it's like, oh my goodness, Man. I got a baby now, and suddenly it hits you. Closed captioning for divorce court provided by... If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Priest Pajay, who says his wife, Ayana Johnson, dressed too provocatively during their marriage. When you're first married, it seems like you were totally incompatible. It seemed like you wanted to work, and you wanted to go have fun. No, but you like going home and being with your family. She liked going out. She wanted to party. Was that the personality difference? Yeah. Yep. So how'd you end up coming in the first place? I have no idea. Did you know he was born in a couch potato when you met him? Not really. When I first met him, it was shortly after I had my son, so I was already homebound. You know what I'm saying? I really couldn't do nothing anyway. That's what happens when you have kids right. young. It kind right. of kind of right. ties you down. Right. So the beginning of our relationship, it was, we was just at my mama house. All, I mean, all the time we was there. We didn't go nowhere. We didn't do nothing, you know. But then when we moved into our own place, I was ready to... You thought things would change. Yeah. And you were ready to just get buck wild and go no, and have some fun. You, you, you not came direct, wild. you came right to me and said, I am not ready for a family. I am not ready to settle down. Why those are you are, lying? Those are I your words. Those are your words. How you gonna stay in here a lot like that? Because you sit there and you well, sit you know there what? and he you told me. He doesn't have to say, I mean, I don't know if you said it or not, but your attitude, because right. of, I heard it, because... You had a child young, mm -hmm. you were at your mother's house, and all you could do was stay at home. Right. Right then and there, it's like, oh my goodness, Man. I got a baby now, and all I can do is stay at home. I can't go out, I can't have fun, and suddenly it hits you. But, but that's what happens when you have a child. You have responsibility, the partying cuts down, the going out cuts down, hanging out with your friends because you have to meet the child's need. You probably didn't think about that before you had that kid. But your, Honor, thought your mama would take care of it and got food, huh? Yeah, but I, I wasn't going out and stuff before I had him. When yes, we moved, were. before I had my son, Your Honor, I was yes, underage. You were. I was underage. Every I, I once in a while. Out. Every once in a while. You, you know, I did go out, but we wasn't, that out. wasn't nothing. But after we moved, Your Honor, he tried so hard to keep me in that house and keep me from going out. I didn't try to keep out. you in the house. Yeah, that's going to make the me want to do it more. The two of you just like married too young. You were trying to get out of Mama's house because you already had a baby, mm -hmm. and you were tied down there. Before you had the baby, you didn't get to go out and party too much because apparently your family had some strict rules. You were trying to get out of Mama's house and Daddy's house, thought you'd go over here and you'd be able no, to go out Honor. and have more fun. No, Your Honor. Me, exactly. The reason me exactly. and him got together, it wasn't to get out of my Mama's house or none of that stuff. Because when I met him, he treated me like a lady. He was such a gentleman to me. That's what won me over. You know what I'm saying? That's all that it was. And when we moved... So treating you like a lady, he wasn't yeah. taking you out partying every night? He wasn't taking me out, period. We always went so out. We went and out. that's every what won weeks, you over. We went to dinner. Wait a minute, but that's what won you over. So yeah. once you married because him, why different. did you want to change? Because he didn't maintain that. He didn't treat I me did the same. I did maintain. I continued Honor, to do who, what I had to do. You the one who constantly kept running the streets, Your Honor. wanting to go out all the time, wanting to go do this, okay. wanting to go do that. You, no, you, 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 you've you contradicted yourself because you said he treated you like a lady in the beginning, and you didn't go out, and that's what won you over. That he so treated me so nice. So once you married. Not that he didn't take me out, but just the fact that he put me up on a pedestal, Your Honor. And he then made, he took you off? Not me you off, fell kicked off. it out from under me. Dude. Kicked it out from under me. Kicked it right out. Kicked it right out. He just, he changed. He well, changed. maybe that's because you changed. Maybe. When divorce court continues. Here's a man that treats you like a kid, and you didn't like that. So now here you are, big girl, over 18, on your own. You get to make all the decisions, and suddenly you can't make that decision?
Divorce court continues in the case of Ayanna Johnson, who says her husband, Priest Pajay, abandoned her personal belongings after he moved out of the apartment they once shared. Did you change too? I don't think so. I well, come on like now, Mrs. 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 Person, Johnson, I mean, if you were at, at first satisfied with not going out and staying at home and just being in his presence and being with him, and then, then once you got married, you wanted to go out and you wanted to be with your friends and you wanted to party, isn't that a change? Yeah, because once he started doing stuff with his friends and being gone and stuff, I don't feel like I should be the only okay, one. Okay, so right now, there with me. When so I had now, to, hold I had on a second. Him. So now the, the collectibles, you say, were left at, in Texas mm -hmm. because the two of you moved to Indiana, you didn't have a big enough moving van, right. and you, he promised to go back to get them. Right. He and promised. when he didn't go back to get them, you didn't go back to get them. No. So what did you think was going to happen to him? I knew that they would get destroyed. I had received um, notification from the apartment complex, like telling us that we had so many days to mm -hmm. pay up the um, past due rent because his apartment when we, the months when I'm I had I'm not talking moved, about the past due rent. What did you think was going to happen to those things that you left? I knew you didn't that go back did, to get I knew, They told me that they were going to sell the property or destroy it, and I knew that. And I mean, I... So why didn't you do it? I, Your Honor, I didn't feel like I was capable of but it. But it was your stuff. Yeah, I didn't feel like I was capable of moving but, it but, but wait myself. a minute, but here's a man that treats you like a kid and treats you like a little girl and always telling you what to do, and you didn't like that. So now here you are, Big girl, over 18, on your own, you get to make all the decisions. Mm -hmm. Where to go, when to go, how to go, what to do, and suddenly you can't make that decision? Your Honor, I felt like it was part of his responsibility oh. as well. Because it wasn't just my things. Our children's things were there, and it hit, like I said, his car. If you wanted it, you should have found a way to go get it. There were any number of ways you could have gone to get those items. Any number of ways. Now you're Miss Independent, and you, you know, you can do what you want to do, and you got a new boyfriend, and you got this, you got that. You couldn't fly down there, 200 some dollars, rent a car, another couple of hundred dollars, and get it? Real and simple. rent a van, and rent this, and get all this stuff, and bring it back all on myself, and he don't have to, to do nothing for it, and I have to do all this for the kids. And he didn't want it. Nothing. You wanted it. So if you wanted it, you should have gone to get then it. He should have told me he didn't want it. If he told me he didn't want to go back, then then we could have. Then okay. I could have found a way back. But Ms. he Johnson, still led me to believe he was going. His actions told you he wasn't going back. But his words did not, Your Honor. If the words and the actions don't match, don't latch. End of that one. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. I don't understand that argument at all. Now, what was that case really all about? You want to tell me? Because I missed something, obviously. There's just two young people that grew apart and never did. It doesn't sound like they ever really but, did but it. But I missed something. I, I missed something. Was it because he put her on a pedestal before and she thought she was still the queen and he would go back and get the items and she was waiting for him to do it? Did she oh, really not she... want them? Does she now just want $1,000? I mean, I didn't understand it. She wanted him to do it. That's all. You hit it on the head. If she wanted it, why didn't she go back and get it? 